this all these acts of disobedience as bad as they are there was something uh, even worse so why is this particularly bad not only killing prophets is bad because these are prophets who who are the highest spiritual um kind of ranking human beings and the closest to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is even worse in the case of the israel is that the whole point of chosenness was to support the prophets and be the custodian uh, of their heritage what they ended up ended doing uh, is killing them uh, instead uh, of uh, supporting them this particular uh, issue is mentioned actually nine times in the quran this one example and it's mentioned by the way a number of times by jesus in the gospels correct the gospel, the gospel correct. of matthew for example correct. particularly correct. so لقد أخذنا ميثاق بني إسرائيل وأرسل إليهم رسلا كلما جاءهم رسول بما لا تهوى أنفسهم فريقا كذبوا وفريقا يقتلون We took the covenant of the children of Israel and sent messengers to them Whenever a messenger came to them with what their souls uh, did not desire they accused a group of lying and they killed another group As you can see here is the kind of emphasis one example of the um, kind of how serious this issue is it's serious for anybody but it's even more so in the case of israel when it kind of undermined their chosenness by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so instead of supporting those prophets they killed some of them and they uh, caused uh, uh, accused the others of lying and as you mentioned, Paul, this isn't really a theme that is mentioned in the Quran. So before anybody jumps at the Quran, accuses it of being anti-Semitic and all that nonsense, this is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible and mentioned actually in the New Testament. As you said, this is the reference you mentioned. Paul. Oh, I, see I didn't realize you were going to say it. Okay. Yeah, well, you mind uh, you read my mind so um, and this is uh, jesus talking to the scribes and the pharisees and you say if you claim you say if we had lived in the days of our ancestors we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets now look at the plural the use the use of the plural it's not in the singular it is in the plural so what is he talking about well this is uh, from um that's by Elijah. This is uh, from uh, the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, according to the to the Christians. And the Israelites have forsaken. This is him, uh, Prophet Elijah, complaining to God. The Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down uh, your uh, altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Quite insistent. And what's interesting here, what I highlighted, is the connection between the mithaq, the covenant, and the killing of prophets. It's mentioned in the in the verse that I selected, and it's mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, in this kind of association. They have forsaken your covenant, mm. uh, and what follows is killed your prophets. That is, even in the um, Hebrew Bible, really implied that that's what I talk about, the tension that's never resolved in the Hebrew Bible. They're chosen, but then they do all of that. And the Bible doesn't know what to do with it. Um, so what it does, it ends up saying, chosen, 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 disobedient, 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 sort it out. And it's left at that. The Quran comes and resolves all this for everybody. Makes it clear what happened. Um, and and uh, I always say, people talk about theology theology for me cannot be um, separated from history i never believed in that methodology for me history and theology have to work together for theology uh, to have to be any to be substantive and to be any to have any value it has to be rooted in history it has to explain history if it doesn't that theology is unhistorical so meaning it is incorrect it is inaccurate there are other verses in the Quran that also uh, links the killing of um, uh, prophets to the concept of covenant, mithaq. I, I can't quote them all. I've got one here. I don't have it on, on slide. 
فبما نقضهم ميثاقهم وكفرهم بآيات الله وقتلهم الأنبياء for their breaking their covenant their disbelief, disbelief in the signs of Allah and their killing of the prophets without right that is verse uh, 4 chapter 4 verse 155 for anybody uh, who would like um, to check it out um, so what we have here is the Israelites the, the image we get both in the Hebrew Bible confirmed in the New Testament and clarified uh, in the Quran that the uh, Israelites uh, were consistently persistently disobedient not righteous uh, and sinful nation that's what happened throughout so so they were chosen uh, in order uh, chosen to provide support for the prophets uh, because they were ma made the host nation of the prophets uh, there they that continued that role continued for centuries <clears throat> during that time because of their disobedience etc they were far from the perfect custodians of the prophetic uh, uh, heritage but they were the best that was there and that continued for centuries until it ended at some point so when did end now we know that the israelites completely failed to support Jesus. In fact, they tried to kill him. Indeed, the Christians and the Jews believe they succeeded in doing that. And that, of course, resulted in all kinds of misery for the Jews and atrocities committed by the Christians over the centuries. Let's not forget that. But the Quran uh, actually should um, make things a lot better uh, for the Jews in terms of stopping Christian hatred and aggression because it clarifies it they did not actually kill him he escaped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him having they failed to kill to kill him so they're not responsible for uh, his supposed alleged crucifixion but they were responsible for the loss of his message remember what we said earlier their role is to be the custodians uh, of the uh, prophetic heritage where is the prophetic heritage of jesus anybody who knows anything about the history of the new testament and the history of early christianity would tell you whoever was there failed and failed miserably and completely to retain protect preserve jesus's heritage it is gone there's none left we have to work out what actually jesus really said and on the basis of the new testament and if you don't use any other better reference good luck with that and uh, western scholarship would confirm that there is really really no luck uh, in that and that goal in achieving that uh, but but like i say up to that point uh, the, uh, the the uh, the israelites uh, were the best available and uh, supported because they had this many prophets and because they had a lot of righteous pious people so that continued uh, for those individuals played a critical role in the success and continuation of that monotheistic nation to stay there and to continue to be the way it is. I mean, even after the Christianity, uh, which was within a couple of decades, uh, turned into something that had nothing to do with Jesus and divinity, uh, the, you know, uh, Jesus was turned into divine, etc., made its way into Christianity. Uh, Judaism remained the way it is. It's quite, it's such a beautiful example of how it survived over the centuries despite all kinds now this happened right in the middle of it still it remained and succeeded to be the way it is protected itself and of course people who wanted to seek real monotheism their own message and they could have found it but they were far far from being uh, perfect so that's what they were imperfect custodians uh, of prophetic tradition however all this chosenness, this chosenness ended 
abruptly and completely when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was commissioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was not an Israelite. He was from the lineage of Ishmael. He was, he is the last prophet. So there are no prophets after him. There's no hosting of prophets to be exercised by the Israelites. He brought a new law. The new law means uh, the one option that was available for people who thought monotheism is no more the only option available. In fact, he brought a new book that's corrective and preserved. It's, 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 it's authentic. It hasn't changed. It wasn't going to change. We know it when it was revealed. We know the names of people who wrote it down. We know names of hundreds of people who memorized it from day one. We know all of that. That history is contrasted with the history of the Bible. And you can see why suddenly you have a message, the like of which never, ever happened before. We've just been talking about the custodian, the nation that, that was the custodian nation of the prophet could not, of the prophets in general, could not retain, preserve, protect the tradition that was uh, revealed through those prophets, but then contrast this with what happened with Islam and the protection uh, <clears throat> of its book, uh, its message. And you can see there is no purpose. There was a purpose for chosenness. It must not be denied that the Israelites were chosen, but that chosenness is, is, is gone. And um, obviously, <laughs> Can I just add another point? Uh, um, uh, you put one, one and two there, uh, complete failure to support Jesus, uh, and number two, the imperfect custodianship of the tradition. Another one I, I, I would add in would be the destruction of the temple, the Jer Jerusalem temple in AD 70 by the Romans. It was often seen, particularly in the uh, early centuries, as a great judgment of God on the uh, the Israelites because so many of the, 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 the laws given to Moses in the Torah are concerned with temple worship. Uh, and, and and that 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 center of the Israelite religion at that time was effectively, well, was completely destroyed, and has never been rebuilt. Uh, and so, uh, what we what we have after that is is not the same identical religion. It morphed into what we call uh, rabbinic Judaism, which is centered around the study of the Torah. And ultimately, what really replaced that, particularly amongst Orthodox Jews, who were the major the only Jews for centuries was the, the Talmud, the study of the Talmud. That really became the focus of Jewish piety and life and study and work and everything was focused on and Not so much the temple, because in the, if you look at the New Testament, it's a lot of it's to do with the temple. You know, Jesus goes up to the temple in Matthew 24, uh, and, and uh, it, it really is central, but that completely disappeared. So I think arguably this is the judgment of God to destroy that... Uh, that, that was the end of Israel's chosenness at that point. Uh, that, that would be a, a view that was very popular in the early centuries of the common era, I think. Yeah, I think you can, obviously, uh, that restricted more uh, kind of their role, but they were still left with whatever they inherited. And yeah. what they inherited was the best that was available. Yeah. When the Prophet Sallallahu obviously appeared in Arabia, there were Christians and there were Jews there. Yeah, yeah. And the Jews that were there still had some of those teachings, retained yeah, yeah. some of these teachings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but that, that obviously was weakened. And there's a more point you raised that I actually, Paul, deliberately avoided um, touching on it, getting into it in this video so it doesn't become a bit just too, too long, uh, which is basically the role of the Holy Land. The Holy mm -hmm. Land is mm -hmm. connected directly to the chosenness of the Israelites. In my view, and if we take into account the interpretation I'm presenting here of the chosenness of Israel, that Holy Land is no more, no more, is for the Israelites alone. Because what I see it, I see it as a source um, of kind of place where confirmed 
kind of they will all it will always kind of gather them together and be, be the place of focus where would help them to be always that same nation the one nation that retained that heritage that from one century one generation to another one century to another that role of the holy land being exclusively to the israelite ended obviously we all know what happened uh, when omar for instance uh, opened uh, palestine um he didn't declare oh now we have to give it back to the israelites or to the jews and nobody to live there of course we didn't because that's not the uh, the understanding of the quran and that's not the islamic perspective so that that holy land having this kind of particular land for them in my view is connected directly and help them in doing that what that also means is that now that they are not the chosen people of god well that land they might still want to live there but it has no spiritual purpose in the plan of god it has no purpose for them to be there that's slightly different subject but i just wanted to make yeah, yeah, this yeah. comment okay. Okay. Um, so and i wanted just um to finish this slide by mentioning this particular verse we have revealed to you meaning muhammad the book in truth confirming that which preceded it of the scripture uh, and as has uh, and has authority uh, over it so it's kind of meaning uh, that it is more authoritative it's corrective it's it's a book that uh, clarifies um clarifies it can, can, can i just ask about that five four jet you just quoted is it the the arabic word but is it mohaymen uh in mohaymen. Yes. Well, what does that what does that mean in this in in this context do you think so mohaymen it, it actually um uh, exegetes kind of you use two different concepts to explain it one of them uh, is as guide guidance so um you read a lot of people a lot of exegetes who translate this word mohaymen as a guide but mohaymen also when some something is um kind of uh, has overall control overall authority right. over so something with higher higher position right. it's mohaymen it's kind of um, it's followed by a preposition ala on in Arabic. So it's something that's on top of something else, as in it kind of is more powerful, more authoritative, has more authority than whatever it is. So it's talking here about the, uh, the other uh, scripture that uh, came uh, before the Quran meaning and confirming what was already there because the quran does confirm um really kind of fundamental aspects of monotheism uh, the concept of prophets the names of some of these prophets etc that are mentioned in the torah and also of course in the uh, new testament in the hebrew bible and the new testament but also it corrects a lot uh, of uh, of what's mentioned there so it's it's, it's that meaning uh, having more authority as in spiritual authority more it's the correct book if you like is the one that right. um puts right everything else it's, 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 so, it's a very rich term then it's, it's quite it's quite implicit and quite, correct. quite complex correct okay. correct and it is uh, i would say also it's one of the beautiful names of allah yes indeed 